All right, back to Washington, D.C. to discuss the ongoing, um, well, I, I don't know what you call it at this point. Maybe Scott Desjardins has an idea. Congressman Desjardins joins us uh, to talk about activities over the weekend and where we go from here. Congressman, good afternoon. Hope you're well. Uh, thank you, Matt. Doing well. Thank you for the no vote. Um, I think we need uh, more people like you saying no to the continuation of these continuing resolutions that just kind of pushes the ball down the road. And, you know, I'm I'm of the philosophy that if we continue to do the same thing like we've done it before, we're going to get the same results. Tell me your overview of what went down this weekend and why you decided to vote no on the stopgap. Okay, well, I've been pretty consistent since I've been in Congress voting against stopgap uh, resolutions. I did vote for the one on Friday because it cut spending 28% and it secured the border and did a, a bunch of uh, very conservative things. Didn't stand a chance in the Senate, but it does show where we as Republicans stand, and that's cutting spending, securing the border. The one on Saturday was just your typical uh, basically clean CR, which continued to fund the government at prior levels and didn't do anything to cut spending. So, uh, you yeah, know, that's always been an easy no vote for me. We have a job to do. That's to uh, put our appropriation bills out and uh, show the American people what the Republicans stand for in terms of uh, budget. And that's what I guess we're going to continue to do through the month of October and then negotiate with the Senate and the White House. Uh, you now have 45 days to work these appropriations bills. Is that the expectation? Tell me what life looks like in the House of Representatives moving forward. Now, I would hope that there is a spirit of urgency right now that you have a 45-day window. Yeah, there is. You know, we've passed uh, some of the more difficult approach bills in terms of our actually the more valuable approach bills. Seventy percent of the funding has been accounted for. Uh, we have some challenging approach bills yet ahead. But the bottom line is whether the Senate takes them up or not, uh, we will have hundreds and hundreds of amendments. We'll have late nights of voting, and that's the way it's supposed to be. We normally do that in July. But, yes, I think there will be a sense of urgency. And then when we go to the Senate, we'll say, well, this is the way we think it should be. They'll say it should be something else, but we have a stronger negotiating hand. Help me understand what happens, because the way I see this playing out, if there is a stronger line, a harder line on cuts, then you send it over to the Senate, and the Senate simply says no, and they continue to blame the Republicans. Uh, they'll figure right. out a way to use their friends in the mainstream media to blame the Republicans. So if they delay this for four, I mean, how does this all play out in your in your head, Scott? Well, when you're only a third of the process and you have a slim majority, uh, it makes it very difficult. So uh, we kind of knew going into this year that uh, we need to stop Biden's aggressive social agenda, climate agenda, and uh, be a backstop to that. So we can telegraph to the American people best we can that, you know, we've got to secure our border. We've got to fix the economy. We've got to be energy independent. We've got to cut spending. And uh, we do the best we can messaging until we can control the Senate and the White House. So we kind of knew what we we're up against, but uh, we're relegated somewhat to messaging. But I do think that um, most Americans get it. They're feeling it every time they go to the store. They feel it when they fill up the, the tanks and, and they see what's going on at the border. And, you know, it's all around us. So uh, the, the mainstream media can continue to be uh, mouthpiece for the Democratic Party, but real Americans see what's going on, and it's our job to show how Republicans would lead if we get the chance to control more of the process. Scott, I know I'm I'm about to kind of I'm not going to yell at you, but I'm I'm going to kind of argue with the wrong guy on this point, but I still have to push back. Because I hear this for the last 24 years I've been doing this job. Republicans, when they don't have all three bodies, Senate, House, and the presidency, they complain that they have to have all three. And when they do have all three, you don't cut spending. Ever. Ever. And <laughs> I, I don't think you're wrong for bringing that argument. It's been a frustration of mine. We had that a couple of times. We certainly had it with Trump. We did cut taxes, but, uh, yeah, we did not cut spending. There was a pro-growth policy that was to bring manufacturing back, cut taxes, build the economy. If that had been given a chance, I think we would see uh, a better outcome. But you're, you're not wrong to suggest that we are dysfunctional as a party. We saw that last week. We you know, had the most conservative continuing resolution ever, and we met all the demands of many people in the conference, and yet it still went down with Republican votes on Friday. So there's a dysfunction within the Republican Party. There's dysfunction within the Democratic Party. It's kind of a situation where the tail's wagging the dog, no matter who's in power. And uh, as Washington legislators, we got to do better. We're not always going to get everything you want or everything I want, 
but we can move in the right direction, and, and that's been a failure uh, in government for a while. Congressman Scott Desjardins is our guest for a couple of additional moments. Uh, with regard to the the individuals that stymied the Friday vote, to in particular Matt Gates is now calling over the weekend for um, a, a call to vacate. Uh, he wants uh, to remove McCarthy. He feels like there's no confidence in Kevin McCarthy as Speaker of the House. Where are you on all of that? Well, I think, uh, you know, in January, Kevin went through 15 rounds. Uh, several different speakers were put up for a vote. No one could get more than 20 votes. I don't think that's changed. It's a, a very difficult job right now for anybody. I don't know that the people wanting to vacate the chair have an alternative. I don't think as Republicans we need to basically put on another clown show like we saw in January. If there's a strategy, if there's somebody willing to step up and do the job that can get the votes, we can have that discussion. But right now, uh, it, it seems like it would just you know, foster more dysfunction with their own conference. Um, McCarthy, the speaker, says bring it on. I mean, do, do you think that Gates has four buddies that would – stymie his continuation as speaker of the house or do you think cooler heads would prevail before it got to that well i I think that he's probably got other people that would join in again i don't think those people have a strategy or an end game which is dangerous um i think that there's some democrats that would vote president or or maybe even vote for the speaker so i don't think it would be a successful attempt if it happens and uh, again if you don't have an end game or a strategy it's kind of like ukraine we need an end game and a strategy in ukraine if we're going to continue funding them and, uh, you know, there, there's probably going to be a big funding bill coming forward that uh, I will vote against. Uh, I did vote for a $300 million funding thing last week, but that's what was allocated after Russia invaded uh, Crimea 14 years ago, and it's been part of the NDAA. So I think with Ukraine, there's a, a real gray zone. People want to make it a black or white argument, but uh, we've got superpower adversaries in China and Russia, and as long as uh, – we have uh, communist countries that are invading sovereign nations. Uh, you know, I think it's up to NATO allies and us to help uh, help in that war effort. But that doesn't mean we should give blank checks like Biden has been trying to do uh, to to support their government, their pensions, and whatnot. So, anyways, I know that wasn't a topic. No, but no, it, no, I it, like it. I like it. Yeah, no, it, it I think it's, it's important. Uh, there's a third rail there as well. I'm paying being on armed services and being privy to. Uh, classified briefings, I think that there is a strategy where we help with Ukraine, and I'd love to come on and talk about that more because uh, it, it's uh, becoming more and more controversial. But Finally, anyways. well, and, and I know you've got a boogie, but finally, um, what is the strategy? Have you heard anything from leadership with regard to whether or not you're going to stick around in, in Washington, D.C. over weekends? I mean, the expectation on the part of the American people, and particularly on the part of the state of Ten- people of the state of Tennessee is, that if if you could not get it done in the allotted time, September 30th being the last day of the physical year, and now you've passed a stopgap spending measure, that you have a sense of urgency that will keep you in D.C., one would presume this weekend. Is that the expectation? Yeah, I, I think that there's a schedule to get the remaining appropriation bills done, and if that requires weekends, then I'm all for it. If we can get those done on the schedule that they've laid out, that's fine, but it, it's got to be done. And so whether it takes seven or eight days a week to get it done, we'll do it. I think right now they have it laid out to where we do it over the next six weeks and we'll get the remainder done. But, uh, you know, it's very fluid right now. So I don't make that decision, but I'm there to work if that's what we need to do. I'd bet you the rest of my annual paycheck for the rest of the year that you don't have it done by November 17th. But that's just me. You know what? That's just me. I know that if it were up to you, Scott, it'd be done like tomorrow. So I'm not I'm not fussing at you, but you know what I'm saying? Yeah, I think we'll have the appropriation bills done. Whether or not they get uh, voted through remains to be seen. Some people, you know, you just well, you, you can't please everybody all the time. Uh, well, I Scott, think we'll get the appropriation bills done, but I wouldn't bet you. Scott, <laughs> if they don't get voted through, then they're not done. Right. <laughs> right. All right. Love you. Thank you for your time. I appreciate you. There's Scott Desjardins.